you know, first of all, thank you all for joining and apologize for the initial delay. Um, my name is Alex and I, I lead the customer success team here at Entopology. Um, and today I will be um, talking about and demoing one of uh, the most powerful and useful tools in Entop platform, uh, variable shelling. And shelling itself is a relatively common function in any CAD software, any CAD software. However, as I'm sure many of you watching know from experience, um, it's also one of the easiest functions to break in CAD. Um, Self-intersections and other issues cause errors. And once any level of complexity is introduced to a model, um, uh, that function itself can break. And that's not true in Entop platform. Um, due to our modeling technology, um, functions like shelling never fail. And I'll just go ahead and show that real quick. Um, and I have three different models that I brought in into the platform. So I'm just going to hit show. And first I'll bring in this impeller. Just apply a thickness of one. I'm gonna isolate this view and do a section cut to kind of see, you know, that, that only took a few seconds to run um, and kind of see this working. And, you know, this is uh, geometry independent. So I'm just gonna run through another quick example. So rather than impeller, um, I'll take this skull here and, I'll, and you know, this will also work very easily. Now, if I section cut this again, you can see here that it ran extremely smoothly. And just to show off um, one more thing, um, you know, we could take a pretty complicated cat part like this and do the same function. Now that's just gonna take a minute to run. Actually I'm gonna let's do 2.5 just to add some thickness there. Now if I section cut this, you'll see um, this, the shelling function still is able to run. Yeah, and you know, at shelling alone is a very powerful tool for light weighting. Um, and because you know, fundamentally shells are light and stiff. And you know, what we can do is we could further enhance um, the performance of these shells using principles of field driven design to apply a variable thickness throughout the part using different sorts of data. So I'm, I'm gonna bring up an example of where we did that um, in a bicycle crank. And, and, and in this example, we're gonna use simulation data to add materials in areas of high stress and remove materials where it's not needed. Um, and as far as the actual setup, you know, here we have this initial CAD geometry and we're, I'm not necessarily gonna go through the kind of FEA setup, but we could kind of see this initial FA solution where we're looking at the von Mises stress. So, you know, if we look at our stress, our, our, um, and we're gonna actually take the, this data from this stress result and use it as a ramp function to drive the thickness. And how we do that is just in this stress ramp block. I don't need to visualize that, but if you wanna uh, look in this a little specifically, um, really we're actually pulling out um, areas around max stress and then applying a min and wall thick, min and max wall thickness. And those variables are applied here. And, you know, just to, to see a comp comparison really quickly, um, let's look at a, say, non variable shell thickness. So I'm just going to section cut this. And we could kind of see here, you know, there's, it's non uniform, but in here, um, we could change this view real quick. 
it'll actually auto populate with this new section cut tool, which is really nice. And I'll isolate this view. Um, and you can kind of see here that, you know, these areas of potential st stress concentrations, um, it's much thicker than normally. So you're, you're still getting, um, you're adding a lot more performance to this part while still maintaining um, a lot of the functionality and power of the lightweighting um, function using the shell. And, you know, well, once we have this done, you know, we could take this a step further and just sort of run an initial or a, a post verification um, analysis to make sure everything's still within range of the boundary condition set. And that's what we did here. You can kind of see that it's, it's still very much within range and this is the shell analysis. Um, and, you know, using some math box, we could, we could kind of do some more additional checks as far as like understanding what the stress ratio is. Um, and also, you know, fundamentally, the whole goal of, of this sort of design is, is to lightweight and using, you know, mass properties and comparing the two of the solid mass versus the shelled mass, we end up saving about 38%. Um, uh, it's a, about a 38% reduction in mass. Now, you know, beyond simulation, um, we could use other sources of data to drive shell thickness. Um, for example, uh, if I want to pull this up real quick, um, if I'm 3D printing this part, I may want to vary the thickness of the shell relative to a build plane to prevent warping or something similar. Um, and I actually built a workflow to do that. Um, so if I just to help with visualization, I also built a view to kind of see the overhang region. So this is this is kind of the overhang regions around 45 degrees underneath here. And what we're gonna see, um, and we're gonna use this region to drive the thickness of the shell only in this area. And if I just isolate this view, hit um, X for a section cut, change that plane from normal, we, we could see here that only the areas relative to the build plane, um, you're getting a, a shell thickness higher and everything else is normal. Um, yeah, and I think these are two great examples of using variable shelling in sort of a, a lightweighting application. And um, another great application of variable shelling is with um, this rare flow control and say manifold applications. So one second, Maybe just pull up the view. So um, as an engineer, I, I don't necessarily care about the design of a pipe. Um, I'm, really, I'm really just interested in, in the flow. Um, and in this workflow, uh, we built a parametric, parametric equation um, to design a pipe structure using variable shelling um, where we could control the, the velocity ratio between the inlet and outlet. And uh, if we change these parameters, it will automatically update the design. Um, to illustrate this sort of concept, I did this on a um, pretty simple pipe structure, but with some basic modifications uh, we could apply this to say more complex regions, uh, more complex structures and nozzles and other things. Um, and just to see here, you know, uh, we have this uh, input parameter, this velocity ratio set at one, and you know, you're getting a, a straight line that makes sense. So, and but if we change, if we change this velocity ratio, um, we could kind of see this run through, and it's going to update that design and this is all using variable shelling and some math in the back end combined with that ramp. And yeah, and I think um, this is just a, a really good and interesting example and application of variable shelling that maybe isn't necessarily um, something you would think of straight away in using these sort of functions, but it is a very powerful toolkit 
um, that can be extended here um, to really create performance-driven design. And I will go ahead and stop here. And as far as, um, you know, all these workflows will be shared um, initially, and I will stop for any questions. And if you have any questions, um, you can leave it in the chat. Um, one thing, actually, I want to pull up my screen. So, I want to share my screen one more time. So, um, as as an ending note, um, we actually have a and top essentials and toolkit training next week on May 21st. Um, that's 10 to 10 a.m. to 1.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And really this is a, a great opportunity to get access to NTOP platform. And we're running these bi-weekly. I mean, all these sessions are recorded. So if you want access to NTOP platform to get into software, um, uh, attending this training is, is a great opportunity to do so. Great, thanks everybody.